Welcome to a special interview of Anglican TV. I'm Kevin Coulson. And I'm David Old in a very rainy Gold Coast in Queensland, Australia. All right, we're going to get an update from the Synod happening over in Australia. It has an official title that it's too early in the morning for me to discuss. So Let I thought, me help you out, Kevin. Yes, go for it, it is the General Synod of the Anglican Church of Australia. We normally meet every three years, but it's been mm -hmm. five years because of COVID. But finally, we're meeting together and there has been a lot to talk about. Yes, there is. Now, I'm recording this here at 8.30 a.m., in uh, the east coast of america what time is it where you are david it is 10 30 at night kevin and i've been on the go since about 6 30 in the morning my alarm was set i got up i went to the gym uh, and that was pretty much the only time to myself i had all day okay so let's share there's been a lot of news the the biggest news i saw was from an australian newspaper that said conservatives crushed in this by the senate so let's talk about the, the big news that happened first Sure. So we had a big vote on um, on a statement. Probably best, uh, first of all, to just remind your viewers of the background to what's going sure. on here. So obviously, a number of years ago, the Australian Parliament passed uh, a change to the Marriage Act, allowing same-sex marriage. Nothing new there. It's happened in a lot of different places. But that, of course, presented a unique challenge to the Anglican Church of Australia. How do we uh, respond to that? And um, as in other places, a number of uh, more revisionist dioceses wanted to provide blessings of uh, people in same-sex sex marriages so a number of bills were passed in particularly in Wangaratta diocese and in the Newcastle diocese and um, those bills having been passed the then primate Archbishop Philip Freer of Melbourne uh, sent a submission to the appellate tribunal of the Anglican Church of Australia which is essentially um, a, 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 a high court in the church that offers opinions and the question was are these bills are these ceremonies consistent with the Anglican Church of Australia's constitution. Uh, now, you'd have thought the answer to that would be a pretty clear no, but the appellate tribunal uh, decided otherwise. Uh, and they said they did that on the basis of arguing that it wasn't contrary to the doctrine of the church, since in the constitution of the Anglican Church of Australia, the, doc the word doctrine meant something much, much narrower. Uh, essentially, those matters absolutely vital for um, for salvation. Now, they did that in the face of um, a report from two bodies, the Board of Assessors and the House of Bishops, both of which went, no, 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 it's contrary to the doctrine, and doctrine's pretty wide, and there's a number of things that are, you know, vital for salvation. The appellate tribunal chose effectively to set those reports aside uh, and then issue its opinion anyway, and that opinion essentially gave a green light to those two dioceses, and indeed any other diocese that wanted now to act. Well, um, at the time, I think we talked about that and we realised that um, there was a much consternation about the opinion. Uh, and so the Diocese of Sydney has led uh, a move, but supported by many others across Australia, to um, affirm two statements. And that language of statement is very clear because a statement statement in our constitution as a way of the general synod saying this is what we believe right. on a matter and indeed the appellate tribunal itself had said look uh we've left uh un unresolved that 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 broader uh, um uh, um sense of what's going on and in previous rulings it's also said that statements were a really good way for general synod to uh show what it thinks and that indeed that was the right place to decide uh these matters so we went all right well let's have a statement uh, and we've actually had two statements that we we debated and the big one we want and we want to talk about is this statement number one uh which is a statement on marriage as a union of a man and a woman it's got four essential clauses to it uh um, one, that the faith, ritual, ceremonial and discipline of the church reflects and upholds marriage and it gives you the classical definition of marriage. Um, and it just reminds us that previous resolutions do not condone the liturgical blessing of same-sex relationships. Uh, it then um, also uh, says that solemnization of a marriage between a same-sex couple is contrary to the teaching of Christ and the faith and so on. And also the blessing of a same-sex marriage. So those two distinctions right. is also contrary 
to the faith. Uh, and so what we're doing is we're clearly saying this is here's the orthodox position uh, on marriage. And uh, those statements were circulated uh, at least three or four months, I think, before General Synod met. So we all knew uh, uh, where we were going on that. There's another statement. Uh, really dealing with the definition of, of chastity and unchastity, which might sound like a particularly weird thing to be debating, but chastity and unchastity is a term that's used in our um, guidelines for clergy behaviour called faithfulness and service. So it's an important term for us to define. And we're basically going, chastity means what it's always mean, meant. Um, if you're chaste, you have sexual relations in the right way. To be unchaste is any sexual activity outside of marriage. So those two statements are the ones we debated, but statement number one was the one that actually um, has been fascinating. Fascinating, but di did it pass? Well, so there's the thing. Um, we had a long debate uh, yesterday evening, which I don't even remember when that was now, uh, more than 24 hours ago, we began the debate. Uh, and the debate debate began with a number of amendments to the debate. And, and any uh, body familiar with uh, with this kind of thing would, would recognize what's going on uh, in a lot of those amendments. And, and, and essentially, the amendments all sought to do the same thing, which is to say, no, this is currently our position. This is currently our position. Uh, I, I could change in the future, that kind of thing. Um, those kinds of amendments, and there were three of them, all failed by around the same number in toto uh, in the Synod, and that was they failed by about 90 to 150, mm -hmm. uh, which told us immediately that across the whole of General Synod, there's over 60% uh, who, who were basically holding to the um, orthodox uh, position. There was one amendment that actually did um, did get up that um, uh, made some alterations to the text of the statement, uh, and that was accepted by the movers, uh, and uh, and that, that went up by uh, 195 uh, um, for so it really, it really went through, uh, but the the amended statement that we finally debated uh, was um, was pr pretty much. Uh, I mean, it was in line with what was originally there. We got to the main uh, part of the debate of the amended motion and all the usual arguments there. You know, Matthew nineteen, Jesus isn't really. You can't talk about marriage there. He's just really responding to divorce. Uh, uh, there was more stuff about let's just talk some more. So Archbishop Freer of Melbourne, the former um, the former uh, our primate, said, you know, let's let's. Uh, we need more space to talk. This isn't, isn't the way to do this. Uh, I did speak to some of the Melbourne, Melbourne delegates afterwards, and they said they're a bit surprised because um, in Melbourne, every time someone wants to have a proper talk, he kind of um, they got the sense that it, it wasn't allowing it to happen. But now he wanted to talk, uh, uh, and all, all the usual kind of um, arguments uh, that go ahead. This was a stealth motion uh, with you know dangerous complementarian theology uh, and all that kind of stuff. But um, Synod, got to say. The debate was really well handled by the chair. Uh, so Jeff Smith, the Archbishop of Adelaide, isn't currently the chair, and um, there is a common consensus uh, around Synod from all sides that he's handled Synod really, really well uh, and set a fantastic tone. Uh, mm -hmm. So there was none of the rancor that perhaps you can get in in, in these in these debates. Uh, it was very civil and appreciative of, of, of one another. But once the talking was done, um, Archbishop uh, Kanishka Raffel of Sydney, who of course was the main mover of the motion, got up to give his right of reply. And it was a really strong statement. He said, look, if we fail to pass this, then essentially, some quote, something has gone awry. Something has gone seriously awry in the church. We're not being asked to do anything other than affirm some pretty basic orthodox statements that General Synod has said in the past um, as well. Now, you'd think with the numbers uh, that we had, sort of 190 to 150, that this was going to be a shoe in Except, of course, uh, what do you do in a synod if you want to stymie a vote? What do you do, Kevin, if you think the vote might go against you? Do you know? I'm not that I'm not that devious. You're gonna have to tell well, me what they seasoned, do in seasoned, <laughs> seasoned synod synod politicians know that yeah. what you do is you call a vote by houses. So of uh, course yeah. synod is made up of laity and clergy and then a house of bishops. Now, uh, what's great in on Australia is that our constitution says there's one bishop for every diocese, the diocesan mm -hmm. bishop. But then for the individual diocese, they get one lay and one clergy delegate for every twenty ordained clergy in a, in a full-time position. Mm. So the bigger mm. diocese yeah. 
who of course is by far and away the biggest diocese in Australia, they get many, many more delegates. And that's why there's this substantial now uh, um, conservative orthodox uh, uh, majority now we're seeing um, across across Synod because obviously uh, we know historically it's the conservative evangelical and and and, and thoroughly believing Anglo-Catholics uh, where churches are growing and so they grow and there's more clergy uh, and the liberal uh, diocese surprise surprise are, are, are dying the numbers in clergy and laity the question was were the house of bishops going to come there are 23 diocesan bishops and then one um, aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander bishop representing indigenous peoples first nation peoples so uh, um, that's where we were at, and so a vote was called by houses, as we fully expected, and and we had wondered now whether it would get up in bishops, and this was always going to be the issue. Uh, went to the laity first, I'm just reading from my notes, excuse me, that's and it right. passed the laity 63 to 47, which is pretty, nice. still a pretty substantial yeah. uh, margin. Mm -hmm. Went to the clergy then, uh, and we were voting electronically at this point, so we can get the numbers um, um, exactly. Uh, went to clergy um, 70 to 39 which is a, a really cracking result. I mean, it shows that the clergy are thoroughly orthodox. And I know right now there's members of the Episcopal Church going, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I know. But just an indication of the strength of, sure. of uh, our long-term work of gospel ministry. And then it went to the House of Bishops. Mm. And we, the, you could have cut the air with a knife. Uh, when the result finally came back, the um, bishops had rejected it uh, um, by 10 to 12. Uh, and uh, to say that that landed poorly in the room would be to to to, uh, to understate the matter. Okay. Uh, um, uh, Archbishop um, Raffle then um, sought leave to uh, uh, make a personal uh, statement, which he did, uh, and he expressed his sorrow about things and just said, "Look, we're we're in a, we're in a serious position now." Uh, and we all need to um, stop and think about uh, what we need to do. Uh, the time then was about 10 past 12, um, just gone past midday and lunch was scheduled for 12.30. And um, he asked that we, at that point, we just, we take we take a break. Uh, um, I think he said it in a far better way than that and probably in a more, with more pious language. Like, you know, and we do need to stop and reflect. And, and there was a sense that we all need to stop and think about what to do. Um, uh, I think in error, then some of the main opponents of of the bill objected to that and wanted to just carry on which probably misread the room at that point because there was a sense that most people acknowledge something quite significant um um had happened uh anyway we ended up we ended up getting that adjournment and so we essentially took a long lunch uh, uh, uh when we came back uh bishop chris edwards of sydney uh, um gave notice of a motion uh, that actually asked the bishops to repent now that motion didn't get read at that point uh it, it uh, the chair decided that wanted to pursue other business and uh those that were moving it didn't push the matter i mean understanding orders they could have asked for a suspension and got on with it but they didn't push the matter at that sense uh, and so we moved on to other things we actually debated the the second statement which went along similar numbers and then remarkably um the bishops actually voted for it uh, uh, by uh, by a couple, uh, and that was the one that, that, that dealt with the definition of chastity. Uh, um, but that one also, uh, ironically, also affirmed the Book of Common Prayer definition of, of one man and one woman for marriage. So we ended up in this ridiculously confusing, we ended up in this ridiculously confusing situation where they affirmed but not affirmed it, uh, and then the difference really was the matter of same-sex marriage. So some bishops were just utterly unwilling to go, we cannot do same-sex marriage. They were unwilling to take that position, uh, and so didn't do that. Anyway, so we're, it's a bit of a mess. Uh, I've got to say, uh, um, there was a lot of unhappiness, um, a lot of unhappiness um, in Synod at that point. Um, and, and it really was a, a sense of great disappointment and sadness that so many bishops were unable to uphold the faith that the rest of sin and clearly passionately believed um and i've got to say walking around the room when we had that extended lunch break um just trying to get a sense of the room um there were a good number of tears all in the eyes of of the orthodox and a significant amount of praying and again it was the orthodox traditionalists that were that were that were doing the praying so um it was a, it was a, a palpable sense of sadness i think more than anger um at that point although there was some distress i think more than one diocesan bishop i saw genuinely angry 
that their fellow bishops could not find themselves able to affirm basic um, Christian uh, 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 doctrine. Uh, and then we debated a number of other matters. We had other business to deal with, some bills and legislation that needed to be addressed, uh, started to move on, on on other things. But a genuine sense that um, this matter is well, it's still hanging over us and something needs to be done. And tomorrow we ought to, ex we're going to, we're going to see some matters that, um, the bill call the, the motion calling for the bishops to repent is still at the moment extant uh, um will it be dealt with will it not will something else um happen uh, um I, I have come from from meetings where um uh, future things have been discussed uh but it's obviously not my place at this moment um um to say to say that but to say we're at, we're at a critical moment is is fair uh we may end up um at the end of the five days of synod uh leaving the place and going away and then we may see probably m further serious repercussions uh following following on from that yeah so we're in a strange strange place but probably one very familiar to many of your uh viewers uh, yeah here at general convention in the episcopal <laughs> church we cannot affirm that jesus is lord so yeah you know, it, yeah it, it's hard to watch this happen but, at a national but across level. the board but across the board for you guys whereas here i think what is what is so stark now is that um a a thin majority of our bishops our diocesan bishops mm -hmm. are, are clearly way out of step with the majority of the church sure uh, and, and and where they're at uh, and so that is a remarkable moment uh and well, quite what we do with it but there's there's clear clearly now a a openly divided half house, house of bishops mm -hmm. and whether that fellowship can last is a good question for us all to ask so why does the australian uh, press say that the orthodox anglican church is crushed well, so uh, that's interesting. The, the writer in um, in the Australian newspaper there, uh, when he said crushed, he was speaking of um, the the emotional response okay. uh, right. to that, uh, right. rather than we got smashed in the vote. Because actually, on reflection, um, something quite remarkable happened today. The overwhelming majority of Synod voted in favour of the orthodox, biblical, historical, Catholic view of marriage. They affirmed it, they said, here's what we cannot do, uh, and they did it, interestingly enough, uh, in a greater proportion than the Australian public voted in favour of same-sex marriage uh, um, three or four years ago now. Uh, so that was called in the press an overwhelming majority. Uh, so we got a, an, an, a super overwhelming majority here in the General Synod. It was just bishops that were out of step uh, um but you know um if you want to plow a certain furrow you're going to plow that for all you're worth so for some of the papers uh they're like oh you know anglican church is okay to to same-sex marriage well kind of technically the appellate tribunal has sort of said that before anyway yes, have, yes. uh, um and we're all in a mess anyway so it wasn't like that so so um we are actually taking genuine encouragement from that um, the orthodox position in general synod has grown and grown and grown in the last 20 years and will only continue to grow uh, um, so uh, maybe we just need some bishops who get with the program. I think you need to, some bishop replacements, some retirements, some uh, vote. Absolutely. David, yeah, I want yeah. to thank you for your time. I get some sleep. Big day tomorrow. and hopefully Big day tomorrow. Update. Yeah. Hopefully get an update yeah. before it's all over. Well, we'll try and get another update, and maybe if, if possible, although people are very busy here, we might sure. get some of the key players um, into the next interview together, and that might be a helpful thing as well, Kevin. God bless, my friend. Thank you very much. Keep praying for us. Yes, indeed.